that uh, we can actually see the video. And what I'm going to share with you guys today is uh, Rebecca Byerly. I'm, Rebecca is a Rotary Ambassadorial Scholar. She has an amazing story, not just professionally, but personally. What you're going to catch at the first of this video is an introduction that was made um, at district conference. And um, it may be a little bit hard to hear Tommy Rosser as he's introducing Rebecca, but I think that's the best introduction. So I'm going to let that play. David, are you seeing the video on that? No, I think, I think you closed out your share screen. Okay. So, go back to the sharing screen. All right. So I am going to. Yep. Okay, that might be what happened last week, Chris, Chris Shockley. That might be what happened last week is that whenever uh, whenever we uh, made a switch, it took it took it off the took it off the video that you had. So all right. So hopefully now and Larry Purdue, I am seeing you on screen. So give me a thumbs up if you actually see Rebecca Byerly's picture on there. Okay. Thank you. I am gonna and hopefully the internet will uh, will cooperate and we will hear Rebecca's amazing story. Has spent the last eight years directing and producing Women of the Mountain, a documentary that uh, cor uh, chronicles her personal story of breaking out of an intergenerational cycle of domestic abuse. Based in New Delhi, India, for nearly a decade, she worked as a foreign correspondent across South Asia for the New York Times, the National Geographic, CNN, <laughs> Time, and the World St Wall Street Journal. Now based in Floyd, Virginia, Rebecca continues to report for the New York Times and is currently writing her first book with her literary art agent at ICM Partners. An adventurous enthusiast, Rebecca has some of the longest, most grueling ultra. Oh, please. Oh, yeah, I did really good with that, didn't I? <laughs> <laughs> So let me try this one more time. Oh, you back it up. No, this is it's off. Yeah, it did go. It just went way back. Okay. There you go. Thank you, guys. You you can catch a little humor with this. The bluegrass jamboree is going to get started. Okay, I didn't get far enough back. Kashmir, India and a Rotary Ambassador Scott of Fella to New Delhi, India, 2007-2008. Please welcome Rebecca Byerly. Hi, can everyone see me? I'm gonna go with yes. It is wonderful to join you. If Only virtually. And a year where we have all had to adapt, I hope that you can get a good laugh, that I'm currently sitting across from the Floyd Country Store in the big town of Floyd, Virginia, above a record shop. It's the only place I could find reliable internet, and I have been scouting this out for the last three hours. If you know Floyd County on a Friday night, the bluegrass jamboree is going to get started at 6 o'clock, so I'm, I'm glad I have some time before the bluegrass starts. I'm hoping you're able to see me because I'm not, uh, not sure if you are. It really does feel like coming home to be with you today. 19 years ago, this month, I was introduced to Rotary for the first time. I was a senior in high school at Southeast Guilford, and a beloved English teacher of mine said, Rebecca, I really think you should apply for the Drug and Alcohol Awareness Grant. Though I never talked about it publicly, I think this teacher knew that I was tormented by my parents' alcohol abuse. And she thought this would be a good opportunity to start talking about what was happening. Much to my surprise, I got the grant and had my first opportunity to speak at Rotary in 2002. The Rotary that I went to was Gate City. And this is a morning that changed my life forever. 
That morning, I heard about the Rotary Ambassadorial Scholarship. Now, you guys, I had never left North Carolina more than a few times. I had never been abroad. But I knew that one day I was going to be a Rotary Ambassadorial Scholar. That morning, I also heard the motto, service above self. At 18 years old, it's really hard to understand, you know, what does service above self mean? But even at that time, I knew that I was going to live a life dedicated to service. When I was a senior in high school, 9-11 happened. I didn't know what the Muslim world was, what Arabic was, what Islam was, but I knew that this was an opportunity to understand. By the grace of God and an incredible team around me, I got into American University and studied peace and conflict res resolution with a focus in the Middle East and North Africa. Yes, that's actually a degree. My junior year, I had the opportunity to study abroad in Cairo, Egypt. Now, I was supposed to be staking out my career in the State Department and learning Arabic, but instead, I traveled in places like Palestine and Sudan and Lebanon, and I learned that these places and these people that were often ta taught to fear and even to hate, that they're people just like you and me, and these people became my family. That year, I also started writing for the school paper in Cairo and took up ultra marathon running. I was 21 years old and I was the only female in my program learning Arabic, which is an impossibly hard language. So running was my outlet. And on Friday mornings, I would run across Cairo to the pyramids of the Sphinx. And I'm sharing this with you because that's when this dual passion of telling people stories and running was born. By the time I got back to American University, it was my senior year, and I knew that it was time to apply for the Rotary Ambassadorial Scholarship. One of the happiest moments of my life, I will never forget where I was when I got the call, was hearing that I would be the 2007-2008 Rotary Ambassadorial Scholar to New Delhi, India. Now, this is when we should have a laugh. I had no idea what India was. I had never been there, I didn't know the language, but I knew I wanted to go. That year, I lived in a middle class neighborhood in India. And let me tell you, a middle class neighborhood in India is very different than a middle class neighborhood in America. I usually did not have power or running water. It's 115 degrees, so this is pretty hot. And a lot of mornings, I would wake up covered in mosquito bites on that terrace because it was too hot to sleep in my cinder block apartment. But every single morning, I woke up so thankful that I had this opportunity, that I had the opportunity to see the world and make my dreams a reality. By the time I finished my time as a Rotary Ambassadorial Scholar, I had gotten a job with CNN covering feature stories across Asia. Now, mind you, this was during the Beijing Olympics in 2008, so everyone wanted feature stories. I wrote about Hen Bunting, who was the first Cambodian, uh, Cambodian athlete to compete in the Olympics after the war in Cambodia. I wrote about Mongolian kids who ran at top speeds on their horses across the Mongolian plains. And of course, I ran 150 miles across the Gobi Desert and the Uyghur region of China. The Uyghur region of China now has internment camps for the very people I wrote about. And while the stories were important and they were a stepping stone to my career, it's those experiences that I had and those in-between places that really showed me who I wanted to become. One afternoon, my cinematographer and I were literally stuck in a yurt next to the border of Siberia. And we were with this woman in this yurt, this Mongolian woman, who was kind enough to let us stay with her. And we noticed that there were all of these holes in the wall, and there were these shattered glass in the house, and we didn't know why. So we asked the lady, why do you have holes in your wall? Why is there glass on your floor? And she said, 
you know, sometimes my husband gets drunk and he throws me through the wall. And the cinematographer and I just looked at each other and we cried because we knew that we could not help this woman. This was not a story that we could bring to the world. But that afternoon, we committed ourselves to bringing stories to the world that mattered, that people needed to hear. And you see, this is what happens when you give a young person the opportunity to study abroad on a Rotary Ambassadorial Scholarship. You give them the opportunity to bring the stories of so many more people to the world. A year after I finished my Rotary Ambassadorial Scholarship, I returned to India on a Pulitzer Center on Crisis Reporting grant, this time to Kashmir, which if you know anything about India, Kashmir is one of the most militarized places on the planet. In all, I spent more than a decade on the subcontinent writing people's stories for publications like CNN and National Geographic and the Wall Street Journal. I now write for the New York Times. My most recent stories were on a woman who's 35 years old and runs 200 mile races. Yes, that's right, she runs 200 plus mile races. She not only beats everybody in the race, she wins by 10 hours. She beats all the boys. I wrote about a woman for the New York Times who's a mother of five and she was diagnosed with stage four lung cancer. It's a death sentence. And instead of laying in her bed and crying about the kids she's not gonna get to see grow up, she committed to going on adventures with each of her children before she dies. So I got to join her in Aconcagua, which is in Argentina, and climb a 23,000 foot mountain with this woman and her daughter. If you want to raise strong women who change the world, they need to read about the women who are doing it right now. And that is what you have empowered me to do. The most important thing though you have given me is the opportunity to see my own story. In 2012, my Aunt Joan was diagnosed with stage four lung cancer. Now her cancer was caused by years of self-abuse. My aunt was in a violent relationship for almost 20 years. And though her husband did not kill her, he traumatized her to such a point that she did not have the desire to continue living. That summer in 2012, I went home to take care of her and her 11-year-old son, Patrick. I think I had always known that these things were happening in my family, but it's a really hard thing to see. It took writing about the stories of women in places like India and Egypt and Afghanistan to see my own story, to see that in my own family, we have lost eight people to domestic violence. And those numbers continue. I made a promise to my aunt before she died that I would take care of her son, but I had no idea how I was gonna do that. When she died in 2013, I was in India and the only way I need to deal with the pain that I felt was to run. So that summer I ran 135 miles that reached 18,000 feet in Ladakh, India. I ran a 150 mile race through the Tibetan Plateau in Mustang, Nepal. And I ran 125 miles in Switzerland. In that race, I was on my feet for 56 hours straight. I had to do all of that to have the courage to come back home. And the people that supported me through all of that was you, my dear, dear Rotarians. That summer, I started a film that's called Women of the Mountain. And the film was originally going to be about <coughs> three women who run the longest ultra marathons in the world. In the last eight years, that film has become my own personal story. I'm really pleased to say that we have people who support this film, like Abigail Disney, who's the granddaughter of Walt Disney, and Sebastian Younger, who wrote The Perfect Storm. We're going to apply for Sundance this fall. I am so pleased to share that I have been able to help my family 
in ways that I could have never imagined. But the thing that makes me the proudest and the thing that humbles me every single day is the people who believed in me first is you all. Each and every one of you. And if you ever wonder why do you go to your Rotary meetings, why do you support young people like me? It's because you really can't imagine the impact you have in our lives. You really can't imagine what you do. I am so, so, so thankful. I am going to show you my trailer. I cut this trailer in 2018, so some time has passed since I cut this trailer. But it will give you an idea of my film. And I just want to share that the first people who funded this film was my Rotary Club, was my Rotarian friends in Greensboro, North Carolina. You make things like this possible. If you could show the clip, I'd greatly appreciate it. I could never find a race long enough. I ran 100 mile races through the mountains. Running took me to some of the most beautiful and remote places on earth. It led to my career as a foreign correspondent covering conflict and women's stories. It took running thousands of miles around the world to face the path back home. I was named after my Aunt Rebecca. No one in my family ever talked about her. I didn't even know she existed until I found a newspaper article in a drawer when I was six years old. She was murdered by her husband along with her son. He shot them both on a Sunday evening at home. Hello. Good girl. I found out my other aunt was being abused too. It eventually killed her. She left behind dozens of journals. me a long time to understand this wasn't normal we saved her from the monsters now she's okay i always felt sad for my dad how horrible would it be for your sister to be murdered in your parents house but then i watched this man my first love also abuse everyone around him I'm still afraid of what he may do to my stepmom. Rebecca, your dance is so out of control. He's here. Call 911 now. We have a restraining order on my father, and he's on the property. I just gotta get my mind back together. as long as I can remember. My aunts left me their stories. I find pieces of them everywhere. There's something they want me to do. I'm trying to figure out what that is. So 
Thank you guys uh, for watching this. I am going to attempt one more time to uh, switch over to my PowerPoint. We'll see if this works. Um, I wanted you guys to see this because it is, we know what we do locally at the club level. Sometimes we forget what Rotary accomplishes with people in communities throughout this world. So you can hear my voice breaking up every time I watch this. It does that. But, uh, but thank you guys for, for watching. And um, Rebecca, again, was an ambassadorial scholar. Something we've never sent one from our club, but our district often does. Uh, and as you've heard her say, because Rotarians, because somebody believed in her and gave her an opportunity, she will go on to tell stories that nobody would have had a chance to hear. So, uh, so again, thank you guys uh, for letting me share that today.